protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is May 27th, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, a multi-year peer-reviewed study has found a link between cell phone radiation and cancerous tumors. Then, I was briefed about these brave patriots fighting the government's illegal claims to their land. This is who your government sees as the transgressors? Concerned about open borders, federal agents abusing people and confiscating their land? You must be a hateful Nazi, like this guy. And a video game mimics Alex Jones, portraying him as a transhuman terrorist. We will not relinquish our limbs. Do you understand? What is happening on this planet? Why are they building concentration camps? What's going on out there? All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. This technology falls into the wrong hands. Diseases or viruses that could wipe out the human race. A lot of people discount their products that aren't their best sellers. At InfoWars Life, I like to discount our best-selling products because that's what our listeners and viewers want. Super Mel Vitality has been sold out for two months. It's back in stock. It's hard to keep in stock because it's so hard to produce. It's 30% off for Memorial Day to honor our veterans and others that have stood up for this republic. It's running through three days through Monday. And we've got a whole bunch of our other best sellers like Vitamin Mineral Fusion, uh, which is a, again, fruit punch, multivitamin mineral drink so you absorb more of it, the liver shield that helps detox the body and more, and so many other products that are our best sellers are 30% off. You can also get discounts on top of that, like free shipping on orders above $50 or 10% off when you sign up for auto ship. There's so many specials. Check them out today at InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com or by simply calling toll-free 888-253-3139. And the other great part about this is you're funding the tip of the spear in the fight for human liberty, an organization dedicated not just to our republic, but human liberty and a new renaissance worldwide. So for myself, Alex Jones, and the InfoWars crew here in Austin, Texas, to the U.S. and across the world, God bless you all and thank you for your support. Humanity is awakening and supporting causes like InfoWars are essential in taking the fight to the globalist at the next level. And we begin our news tonight with a very shocking revelation. Hillary Clinton is a liar. I, I know this is uh, just something that you cannot believe to hear because they will tell you all over the media that she's just the most honest, uh, integrity-filled, uh, experienced person on the board. And I can't argue with the lady's experience. We can debate how <laughs> good that experience was. But when you see Mrs. Clinton uh, repeatedly lie and get caught, whether it was her uh, talking about how uh, when she stepped off the jet, I can't remember what country it was, she was dodging sniper fire, uh, you know, she didn't know anything about Benghazi, even though she'd been receiving frequent emails and cables from Ambassador Stevens. I mean, besides all that, now we have this where even MSNBC is calling her out and they say, why don't Hillary's email aides tell her to stop lying? And the discussion came on the heels of the release of an Inspector General report this week that revealed Hillary never sought permission to have a private email server, despite claiming repeatedly that the State Department had knowledge of her use of the private server. Um, so yeah, I'm sure this shocks you and uh, you just don't know what to do with yourself, but let's take a look at MSNBC themselves debating this issue. That was mind boggling. The number of false statements contained within that. Amazing. I mean, I, I, I don't want to be like negative. I really don't. Does she not have anybody around her that can tell her, Jim Van Dye? You know, we got really, to really stop lying about this because everything she said in there was just a lie. I mean, it, it was it was allowed by the State Department. No, it was not allowed by the that State was the whole Department. Point of the news this week. Uh, everybody knew in the State Department that we were doing it. And one of the more encouraging things about this revelation, or I guess just the Hillary experience in general, is when we went out to 
Albuquerque and later on to Anaheim, I was very encouraged to meet very few Hillary Clinton supporters. We met many Bernie supporters, people who were uh, just not going to vote at all, libertarian, anarchist. Uh, but regardless, uh, people are waking up to her, even on the left. So I'm very encouraged to see this. People saying this woman is a liar. She cannot be trusted. And that's not to say that, you know, the other political contenders are any better. But she has her issues, and at least people recognize that. So I think we are one step closer to a utopia planet, uh, even though that's a, a bit far away. Let's talk about some other news. Global elite ignored dire warning at G7 about economic collapse. And on Thursday, leaders at the G7 in Japan ignored a dire warning issued by the prime minister. The collapse in bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers in 2008, at the time the fourth largest U.S. investment bank, was a seminal event of the subprime financial crisis. Its implosion resulted in the loss of more than $10 trillion dollars and market capitalization from global equity markets. And this is what the movie, The Big Short, is loosely based upon. And every time I talk about a movie, somebody wants to tag me like, that wasn't the most historically accurate movie ever made. I, I understand that. Same way if I talk about the Abraham Lincoln movie or Charlie Wilson Dwar, I'm just saying that sometimes those things reference real events. I'm not saying they're the best thing ever made. I had a conversation with a lady about that when we were out in Albuquerque. Uh, she was trying to tell me about Abraham Lincoln and how great he was. And I said, what about how Abraham Lincoln uh, locked up his political opposition? Not people who raped or murdered people, but just people in other parties from him. And then she just, she didn't know what to say to that. She just had her one talking point that he was you know, so great and awesome and she had no retort to that. Uh, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. We'll talk about entertainment more in just one second. But first, let's talk about your health. And there has been a link between cell phones and cancer. And this is something we've heard for a long time, or at least has been speculated for a long time, but now this appears to be backed up by a study. The multi-year peer-reviewed study by the National Toxicology Program found low incidences of two types of tumors in male rats that were exposed to the type of radio frequencies that are commonly emitted by cell phones. A spokesperson for the group was not immediately available to comment. So this is stuff that we hear. I think it was a month or so ago I saw some report about how cell phones could damage sperm counts and things like that. So I understand that cell phones are a part of modern life, but if you can distance yourself from them, I hear even using things like Bluetooth or uh, talking over a car stereo is somewhat useful and beneficial as opposed to just holding it to your head. Let's talk a little bit about entertainment as I teased earlier. Now, the thing with entertainment is I run into people, they'll see some report I did like, uh, the report I did on Rainbow Six Patriots a few years ago. And I meet people, I go to GameStop or whatever, and they say, oh, you, you hate video games, you hate this? I'm like, bro, I don't hate Rainbow Six. I have the new Rainbow Six Siege where you can crash through walls. I think it's awesome. It, that's not what I'm talking about. When I talk about entertainment, it's usually me saying that I like this product, whether it's a video game or a movie or a TV show, whatever. I just didn't like this particular aspect of it. You know, case in point, let's say you go to Chick-fil-A and you know you love the food, you love the lemonade, you love whatever else, but then you see some report that the food babe did say, hey, Chick-fil-A has this ingredient in their food that I don't think is so great. Uh, people sign a petition, Chick-fil-A removes the ingredients, and then you go back to Chick-fil-A and everybody's happy. That's the same way I talk about entertainment. I'm not talking for boycotts or anything like that. If you choose to boycott, that may be other people's opinions, that's fine. I'm just saying if they could change up one or two things, I would like the product more. That's me personally. Now let's talk about this. Uh, the Red Skull is now seemingly teaming up with a bunch of, I guess, radical extremists uh, as far as Americans are concerned. And he's talking about the situation when it comes to migrants. And he's saying basically, you know, these these refugees are flooding our countries and, and you know, hurting our women and, you know, stealing our jobs and all the uh, usual, you know, super right wing talking points. And I have this conversation quite often with people when I talk about things like immigration. And I say all the time, I have no issue with legal immigration, but I think you have to go through it in a very proper way. And they say there's no such thing as illegal immigration. No person is legal. I'm not saying that the fact that you exist makes you illegal. I'm saying that there is a legal way to cross a border. Case in point, uh, just a few weeks ago, I went across seas. And when I went to these various countries, I had to have a passport. I had to have a visa, uh, the TSA or whatever their equivalent of it was checking my bags and patting me down and all this stuff. 
and I get to the front of the line. They say, why are you here? I want to see your passport. I don't have my passport. Go to the back of the line until you find your passport. Get back up to the front of the line. Mr. Jackson, we don't know why you're here, where you're going, how long you'll be staying here. Um, you know, do you have any contacts in the country? All these things I had to go through to enter their country temporarily. And people say, like, it's just an American thing that people get checked to the border. No, they do that all over the world if they have the money to afford it. With that said, I had to le legally enter their country. Had I just walked out of the airport and out on the street without going through customs, I would have committed a crime, even though I'm an American citizen with no criminal record. That's the point I'm making to you. I'm not saying everybody who comes into the country is a criminal. I'm not saying everybody's a, a cartel member or a you know, member of ISIS. I'm saying you have to enter the country through a legal way. And that's what oftentimes gets uh, misconstrued. Like we went out to the Albuquerque rally. I know I keep referencing that, but that's just something that just happened recently. It's like Trump said everybody's you know racist and Mexican and, and uh, they're killing everybody. I'm like, I can't speak for Trump. I'm speaking for me. I'm saying you have to legally enter the country, otherwise you illegally enter the country. It's as simple as that. And now they're using the red skull to uh, put this stuff out there. So once again, I'm not calling for anybody to boycott Marvel. I just wish Marvel would uh, take a different approach. But at the end of the day, I believe in free speech. They can write any uh, thing that they want in their comic books. And we'll transition from the comic books into video games. Now we've seen various portrayals of Alex Jones in media, whether it's on X-Files, or I can't remember the comedian's name. He did uh, Arrested Development. And he just has the guy you know, yelling, you know, these racist, you know, N-words in the White House. And I heard it on Alex Jones because it's true. And I'm like, <laughs> my guy has never said that. And a lot of people, when I run to people who say Alex is racist, they'll oftentimes point me to the clip of Alex Jones wearing the Obama mask. And they'll say that's like blackface or something. If you guys go back and you Google Alex Jones' belly of the beast, you could see a clip of him and Joe Rogan dressing up like the Bush family and calling them devil worshipers long before the majority of the people in the country ever knew who Barack Hussein Obama was. So if you want to call him out for that, you also got to take into account that he was making fun of the Bushes a long time ago. But that goes against their narrative, and thus they will never uh, put that out there in the media. And now we see this. Uh, Alex Jones depicted as a transhuman terrorist in a new video game. Alex Jones here during a three-minute break on Facebook mentions. We're also going to upload this to YouTube. We got Tim Kennedy right here of UFC fame, uh, but really special ops fame over here. This guy's like Chris Collins. Well, he's wild. Uh, here working with us. Tim, I'm very excited that in the near future we're going to be announcing uh, some collaboration together. Yeah, dude, it's going to be fun. You've got so many websites. What's the best website for folks to check out? Uh, Shootdogresponse.com or Tim Kennedy MMA. I mean, that's, that's where you're going to find me. Everything else is social media. At 2 o'clock today, in about 30 minutes, we're going to do another 10-minute Facebook mentions or so. You going to have time? Yeah. I'm Fantastic. Here. Awesome. So I'm just letting you folks know that's coming up. But the main reason I'm doing this quick three-minute video is I got sent this a few days ago. I kind of forgot about it. There's the article on Infowars.com. Alex Jones depicted as transhuman terrorist uh, in new video game. And it's literally my speech from CNN. You know, Hitler took the guns, Stalin took the guns. And then I say, if you don't do what we say, we're going to kill you. And then truck bombs go up. So here we are trying to stop ISIS and Al-Qaeda coming into the country. Here we are trying to stop terrorism. Here we are trying to stop Black Lives Matter, kill the cops. Here I am calling for nonviolence and restore our republic. And it's another game implying that I'm for terrorism. Now, they could claim that in, well, in the future it's, it's transhumanists who've been augmented, who fight back against oppression. So maybe the makers think they're doing me a favor. All I know is it's bizarre, it's weird, and I'm going to be playing that clip here on Facebook Mentions in about 30 minutes when we finish it. So tell us what you think on the article at Infowars.com. Alex Jones depicted as transhumanist terrorist in a new video game. It is crazy. All right, we're going to uh, go ahead and go live here in about 30 seconds. But first off, Tim Kennedy, uh, again, this is unscripted. What is front and center with all the news you're covering, all the things you're doing right now? I think it's preparation. I think it's training. You know, it, it's it's giving people the opportunity to live and exercise their freedoms. You know, if, we, if you don't exercise your freedoms, like a mu muscle atrophy occurs, they shrink and they die. And that's what's happening to our freedoms. We're just letting them dissolve, we're letting them rot, and we're letting them decay, and uh, I'm over it. So me and my friends and everybody that I know, anybody that I have influence of, we're, we're, we are doing exactly what every American should be doing, and that is exercising our freedoms. And in closing, and in exciting news, when are we gonna hear the big UFC announcement? Uh, I have to wait to say what it is until the UFC says it, but it's big. How long do we hear from them probably? Do you know, a month, month maybe? All right. Folks, that's it. Uh, we'll be back in about 30 minutes. We're live right now, infowars.com forward slash show. Come join us. And now we have this. 96-year-old Heimlich used his namesake maneuver on choking woman. So basically, you guys heard of the Heimlich maneuver. Uh, the man who invented the technique was in a living center, and he helped a woman who was 
choking on a hamburger. So <laughs> it all came full circle. You know, he said in the quote that he was very happy that his maneuver saved so many people over the years. You do have to be careful when you do it, though. You can uh, break somebody's ribs. I took a, a Red Cross class about that. So, but you know, you still help people with it. So good for you, uh, 96 year old Dr. Heimlich. Let's talk about somebody who's not doing good things. And this is the jihadi bride, Sally Jones. And basically, uh, Paul Joseph Watson is pointing out the hypocrisy of these social media sites, how they will come down so harshly on various types of conservatives. Or, you know, if you have a, a gun post on Facebook, they want to list it like it's porn. But we see ISIS jihadists allowed to spew hate on Twitter for six months without being banned. And she is also known as Mrs. Terror. And she is back in the news again after threatening ISIS attacks in London, Glasgow and other UK cities this summer. And she said, to be honest, I wouldn't go into central London through June or even July. Well, to be honest, I wouldn't go there, especially by tube, tweeted Jones. And this is Sally Jones following another tweet that simply read England arrow boom. So there you go. Uh, people can get on there, threaten people's lives. They can talk about, uh, you know, a conservative political contender. But if you say something about the liberal political contenders, they want to shut you down. You know, have, you know, some cops show up to your house, all types of manner of other things. But if you're calling for a violent revolution against people, yeah, that's, that's perfectly fine. That's liberal and trendy. And that's how they continue to operate on these social media ghettos, as Matt Drudge calls them. So to an extent, I do view them as a lack of better term, necessary evil. But if you can exist without Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, more power to you. Uh, good job on that. Now, once again, to reference the situation we saw in Albuquerque this this week, myself and, uh, and Michael Zimmerman, when we were out there, there's some guy out there in one of our videos. He had a free El Chapo shirt, and he's talking about how El Chapo was so great and you know, he hated Trump and all that. But the thing I was thinking about when I was looking at this guy is how often uh, these drug kingpins or whoever they turn against their underlings, for I guess lack of a better term, uh, in order to get time off their senses. And now actually the underlings are turning against El Chapo. And now we see El Chapo's captured rivals and spurned lieutenants are lining up to testify against him. And this is according to documents obtained by EFE News. Former Sinaloa lieutenants are expected to confront El Chapo in court. The Flores brothers ran a major portion of the Sinaloa cartel out of Chicago that became DEA informants in 2008 in exchange for not getting life behind bars and also a former rival of the Beltran Leva organization will also likely testify against the Sinaloa cartel boss. And they also talked about how uh, La Barbie, I don't know if you guys are familiar with her, she got the name because she was just so beautiful and I guess they said she looks like a Barbie doll. Uh, she's has a possibility to testify against him in order to get time off. So it just shows there is no honor among these, whether you see the you know gangster movies where everybody kills each other, everybody snitches on each other, uh, it usually doesn't end well. You know, they say if you live that type of lifestyle, you end up dead or in jail, and that's exactly what's going to happen to the majority of the people I just talked about here. And we'll end tonight on this. Uh, I do a lot of human trafficking stories and talk to people, and one of the questions I usually ask the person, whether they be a uh, college professor or an activist or whoever, do you think if we legalize prostitution, a lot of the human trafficking issues would go away? And when I say legalize, I'm talking about consenting adults of age. And they say, the majority of them, that they don't think the problem would go away if you legalize prostitution. And now we see this, World Human Rights Group publishes policy to legalize prostitution. And this is Amnesty International basically saying that uh, it may help if you legalize prostitution. So, and I've heard libertarian arguments for legalizing prostitution to each his own. I'd like to hear your arguments whether prostitution should be legal or illegal. Stay tuned after this for more special reports. There's a very important question that needs to be answered. Will humanity survive? And to look at that threat, we have to ask another question. What is the number one obstacle to human beings and our species surviving and becoming a type one civilization that isn't just dependent on this planet? You could say that it's changes in the heavens, suns going supernova, 
uh, tectonic earthquake and volcano events, nuclear weapons, genetic engineering. But if you look at the race, the acceleration of technological development, I think the biggest threat overall is humanity not pacing ourselves and merging with artificial intelligence. So they're trying to end humanity as if it's a good thing and create this new species. Talk about mad scientists. And there have been several new articles on this just the last few weeks. DARPA is testing implantable chips in soldiers' brains is one of them. Another uh, just came out in mid-April. Rich Americans seeks black market brain implants in bid to plug into artificial intelligence matrix. And they're going to go through the dangerous surgeries of being hooked up, not just with a few wires, but with thousands of connections total, to the brain to an AI computer to try to merge consciousness. My father, a physician, recently went back to continuing education, part of keeping his medical license, and he brought me back some of the literature they gave them. This is from the state medical boards right here in Texas that soon you'll have to have a DNA chip to get a prescription. Not just that chips are going to be on the pills and medicines themselves, but now you're going to have to give your blood, basically every time, a tiny prick, into a DNA chip database that tracks everything going on in your body as well as your genes. In this short report, we're only scratching the surface. And the big issue here is things they denied 20, 30 years ago that were going on, they're now admitting today. What are they doing that we don't know about? We need to have a debate about our species. We need to understand that the global elite have decided we're obsolete and are moving towards a robotic future where there's no place for humanity, as Bill Joy wrote over 15 years ago for Wired Magazine in his article, Why the Future Doesn't Need Us. And the numbers are in. Screen time, all the television, all the prescription drugs, this modern culture is killing us. Our IQs are dropping. People are becoming more and more ignorant society is unraveling and falling apart. So we know that the fruits of this high-tech poison tree are literally killing us. The answer is getting back to healthy living, gardening, spending time with our families, less screen time, and also using compounds that Mother Nature has produced that are known to boost our natural abilities. Humans have built an incredible world. We can change our environment. We do have that magic spark. But the elite think we're ugly and bad and have decided it's time that humans be thrown on the ash heap of history. We have taken some of the compounds that Mother Nature has produced and gotten the cleanest, purest sources of it and put it together in Brain Force, one of the most highly reviewed nootropic brain boosters on the market today that has an incredibly affordable price. Check out Brain Force today and other game-changing compounds like X2 Survival Shield at InfoWarsLife.com. Again, that's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. I will read the questions off to you, and uh, we have a typist here that is going to go ahead and type them into the box as uh, you answer them. So um, just to start off, is there anything that you'd like to tell uh, the people of Reddit? Well, first of all, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, secondarily, uh, no question is off limits uh, tonight, although I reserve the right not to answer some questions, of course. I am assuming... Uh, right off the bat, that the MoveOn.org crowd and the Black Lives <laughs> Matter crowd and the oh. David Brock of Media <laughs> Matters crowd have already infiltrated our audience, uh, but that's fine. I will take all comers, uh, and uh, I'm uh, I, I'm prepared to talk about Trump, about politics, about uh, my books, about men's style, uh, a little fashion advice, whatever folks want to talk about. I'm just delighted to be here. Roger, on your Wikipedia page, you were quoted as saying, in the first grade, I remember going through the cafeteria line and telling every kid that Nixon was in favor of school on Saturdays. It was my first political trick. What other political tricks have you pulled? Well, the reason that trick is important is because my elementary school was having a mock election, Kennedy versus Nixon. Oh. I, uh, I was, uh, for some reason, I was in favor of John Kennedy because I thought he had better hair than Nixon. Uh, and uh, my parents were Catholics, although they were Republicans. Uh, 
And uh, they were, uh, they kind of like Jack Kennedy. There was a real poll there, I think, although I believe they voted for Nixon. In any event, uh, I learned the value of disinformation from a strategic uh, point of view. Uh, but uh, let me say, politics is not beanbag. Uh, and uh, every political leader uh, and political uh, a successful elected uh, uh, official has used subterfuge and artifice, uh, certainly Bill Clinton, Franklin Roosevelt, Richard Nixon, all of them. The problem is uh, that in the old days when we had a limited media oversight and we only had three networks and a couple national newspapers, essentially I think the establishment, be it the government or establishment media, conspired to control a certain narrative. After all, we can't tell the people the truth. They might get panicked. So for their own good. Today, of course, with the rise of the internet and talk radio and cable uh, uh, television, uh, information can no longer be suppressed. And that's why it's important to look back at a number of historical milestones, whether it is... Uh, 9-11, or whether it is the Iraq War, or whether it is the Kennedy assassination, with fresh eyes uh, and with, a, with a, an independent uh, alternative media. One of the biggest benefits to a Trump-Bernie debate would be how small, cowardly, and protected it'd make Crooked Hillary look for backing out of her final Fox News debate against Sanders. Do you think the risks of this debate would be worth the reward? And if so, could you place odds on the outcome? No, I would oppose this debate because strategically, uh, actually, I believe what Trump ought to be doing uh, is to stress those issues that he shares with Bernie. They both oppose the war. They both oppose NAFTA. They're both opposed to TPP and TPA. They uh, both oppose the globalist trade deals that have, as Ross Perot famously said, sucked the jobs out of America. So going into a, a debate with Bernie, you would end up talking about foreign policy, where he's a peacenik, and Trump is, a, I would say, a non-interventionist, not a neocon, and certainly not an isolationist. Uh, but I think you want to be looking for things that you have in common. Now, I don't think that Trump will win Bernie's hard left voters, but I do think the blue-collar Democratic voters in the Rust Belt, who realize that they have been left out by the New World Order economy of the Bushes and Clintons, uh, are ripe territory for Donald Trump. Uh, I think he should go out of his way not to alienate Bernie or his supporters. So here's a pretty interesting question from Trigley Puffs herself. Ha ha ha. What is your opinion on the Holder Justice Department's failure to investigate and prosecute Wall Street fraud in the lead up to the financial crisis? The Wall Street crooks, the insiders, uh, are insulated because they have political pull and they have money. This uh, is the most corrupt Justice Department in American history. Eric Holder makes John Mitchell look like St. Thomas Aquinas <laughs> uh, when it comes to corruption, whether it is fast and furious, whether it is Hillary's email. Hillary's, there's no need for criminal intent here. There's an overwhelming amount of evidence. Cl criminal negligence is clear, uh, and she's broken the law. General David Petraeus's career was destroyed for a much lesser transgression involving uh, uh, classified documents. Uh, that's before we even get to the Clinton Foundation, which is the largest money laundering fraud in U.S. history. It is a multi-billion dollar Ponzi scam. Uh, it is not a charity. It's a slush fund for grifters. Uh, it is the vehicle for the facilitation of multi-million dollar bribes. Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea Clinton would steal a hot stove. Uh, and I think this whole area is going to be one of enormous vulnerability. You can sum this issue up in one word, greed. What role, if any, would you play in a Donald Trump administration? Uh, none whatsoever. First of all, I doubt that I could be confirmed by the U.S. Senate. Uh, <laughs> I have lived a very colorful life. I, I make no bones about it. I... I think it is interesting that when I published the Clinton's War on Women, the result has been a mountain of personal vilification, uh, vilification attacking me. I'm not running for president. Chris Cuomo says to Donald Trump, you are attacking Hillary 
for the indiscretions of her husband. This is not about indiscretions. It's not about consensual sex. It's not about adultery. It's not about uh, uh, marital infidelity. It's not about girlfriends or mistresses or one night stands. It's about sexual assault and rape. The number of women who have accused Bill Clinton uh, is uh, staggering, and they are entirely believable. They have not been paid by anyone to bear false witness against Bill, but that's uh, part of the strategy, attack the women. Uh, Bill, uh, the difference between Bill Cosby and Bill Clinton is that Bill Cosby drugged his victims, where Bill Clinton physically overpowered his and bit them. Uh, that is the sad truth. Uh, Bill Clinton is a predator. Uh, and the mainstream media doesn't want to go there with that nat narrative. They want to redefine this about as being about consensual sex. Any chance of Ron Paul being the head of the Treasury? Dun, dun, dun. Well, I'd rather see Ron Paul be the head of the Fed. Ah, uh, that would wow. be my that would be my first pick. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, Donald Trump uh, has a healthy respect for Ron Paul based on his own statements. Uh, he did once make the argument at a CPAC conference that Ron could not win. He turned out to be right about that. But uh, in many ways, Trump has come out in favor of the uh, uh, auditing the Fed. Uh, and uh, I think that they're, you know, they're, uh, the support of the, of the Ron Paul faction of the party has been a very important element uh, of Trump's rise. They were among the earlier parts of the party, including the Tea Party, uh, and then a lot of new people who've never been in the party before who formed the Trump coalition. Does brain force really work? It really does work. <laughs> Look, I, I have, uh, uh, I had a very um, debilitating illness when I was younger. Uh, and it became very clear after a, a huge number of tests that there was very little that Western medicine could do for me other than wait. Uh, and therefore I began, uh, pursuing alternative medicines like acupuncture, like Chinese herbology, uh, like natural supplements to see how they affected both my mental and physical performance. Uh, and uh, they, I think, uh, improved my athletic performance uh, and they improved my balance uh, and they improved my energy. So yes, I think uh, that many of the products that I have used that I have gotten uh, at InfoWars and other places uh, have uh, have worked. Others I've been less satisfied with. But as far as brain force is concerned, I've got so many things on my mind right now, it's quite helpful. How do you think the, uh, quote, protesters are affecting the perception of Trump uh, throughout the greater minds of, of the United States? I think, I think that this is helping gal galvanize votes for Trump. I think this helps motivate people to register to vote for Trump. This is a polarizing election. Uh, and this effort to abridge, abridge the First Amendment rights of Trump and his supporters to uh, shout him down, uh, the uh, propensity to provoke or incite violence so that the violence can then be blamed on Trump. A lot of people ask me, what is the most important area of InfoWars that runs the whole operation that is having such a big effect against the globalists? And I've said it over and over again, it is you, the listeners and the viewers, that send us the intel, the news tips, that support the broadcast, that spread the word. You are 90% of the operation or more. You don't stand beside us, you stand at the heart of InfoWars. When I talk about the people at InfoWars, from customer service, the shipping department, being just as important as our anchors, our researchers, our investigative journalists and myself, it's absolutely true. Without this team that we've built over the last 20 plus years, we wouldn't be able to do any of what we've been doing. And that's what's so exciting because we finally built up to a point where we now have the launch pad. Introducing AutoShip for InfoWarsLife.com, a new way to save time and money when you stock up on InfoWarsStore.com products. Again, ladies and gentlemen, when products are sold out, you're unable to get them, sometimes for months, but we hold back the products for people that have already signed up for AutoShip. When you choose auto ship before checkout on your order at InfoWarsStore.com, we'll give you 10% off and give you guaranteed delivery of out of stock products that are on your auto ship list. Plus, we're giving you free shipping on all orders above $50. Listeners have been requesting this for years because it's so easy to forget to reorder the products when you need them each month. Now it's finally here. 
AutoShip at InfoWarsStore.com and InfoWarsLife.com. It's easy. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, select your favorite product, click on the AutoShip, and choose how often you want us to send you another order. As you know, I coined the term 360 win. And with the new auto ship feature at InfoWarsLife.com, it's a sure win. You add to that free shipping on orders of $50, it is a can't lose. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and save 10% off on your next InfoWars Life order by selecting auto ship at checkout and get free shipping on all orders above $50. That's InfoWarsStore.com or call toll free 888 253 3139. Your liver can be full of fatty deposits, built up toxins, and even dangerous objects known as liver stones. We worked with the top developers in the field of detox to take tried and true herbs and other compounds known to safely cleanse the liver and fuse it with the latest research and technological development on concentrating these ingredients to give you the maximum effect. Liver Shield is the only liver support product on the market that uses a patented Spigerex blend of powerful organic herbs that support detoxification. And when you visit InfoWars Life, Com. See the instructional video on how to do a six-day liver detox. This isn't a game, and let me tell you, the results are dramatic. Liver Shield is totally organic and made of the safest high-quality herbs. Liver Shield is the only liver support product on the market that uses a patented Spigerex blend of powerful organic herbs that support detoxification. And when you visit InfoWarsLife.com, see the instructional video on how to do a six-day liver detox. This isn't a game, and let me tell you, the results are dramatic. Liver Shield is totally Totally organic and made of the safest high quality herbs. But that said, you need to consult your physician before you do the full detox. Liver Shield can also be used daily by itself for overall upkeep of the liver. Secure your Liver Shield today exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com for the lowest price available. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888 253 3139. Welcome to the BS Club, hosted by the United Kingdom's New World Order-backed propaganda machine, The Guardian. Apparently, The Guardian didn't have any problem rolling out the following baseless drivel to its readers slash YouTube viewers. Of course, commenting on the U.S. presidential election whilst ignoring the massive problems in your own country is a sketchy undertaking to begin with. But when your publication is run by an elitist New World Order lackey like Dame Liz Forgan, the Dame being her high Masonic title, allowing Forgan to rub elbows with royalty, media oligarchs, and the Lord Rothschild, you do as expected. Here is what The Telegraph had to say about Dame Liz in 2013 before she became the chair of Scott Trust Limited, the British company that owns the Guardian Media Group. The Telegraph writes, why not spend 8,000 pounds on a leaving due, a party held when leaving a job? That's what Dame Liz and her cast are entitled to. That's what the little people are there to pay for. There could be no clearer demonstration of the contempt that Dame Liz, who exudes the haughty sense of self-worth and entitlement that typifies the arts establishment, has for the rest of us, that she chose a drinks party funded by the taxpayer to attack the government for cutting the arts budget, contempt, and a jaw-dropping lack of self-awareness. So without further ado, here is the Guardian Stephen Thrasher looking forward to the day when America's dying white majority is overthrown and a political revolution led by people of color ends the white supremacist system currently represented by Donald Trump's presidential campaign. When we had a clear symbol that the country is literally becoming more black, why shouldn't we have expected his successor to be the meanest, whitest, most vile bigot possible? And when protesters demanded that Black Lives Matter, why shouldn't we have anticipated the rise of a candidate who encourages violence against peaceful demonstrators? A President Trump would fit right into American history. I'm waiting for the year 2043, when this white supremacist nation becomes mostly non-white. 
that's when true political revolution might be possible. Thrasher, you work for the so-called dying white majority, completely ignoring that Europe and now the United States are quietly being invaded by Sharia law zealots hell-bent on throwing people of Thrasher's persuasion off of rooftops. Not to be outdone in the threat-laced propaganda lecturing is Guardian columnist Jonathan Friedland. The world is watching. Then the world was inspired. Now we're scared. He won't rule out dropping a nuclear bomb on Europe. Islamophobia would be a matter of state policy. If you're Mexican, you'll know that the American president thinks you're basically a criminal or a rapist there'll be a surge of what people will call anti-Americanism. People will mock the nation as dumb, vulgar and aggressive. It'll be like it was in the George W. Bush years, only much, much worse. Friedland, your smug elitist arrogance and weak threats are just as bad as your flaccid declaration of anti-Americanism. Your sycophantic jabbering makes me wonder when you're due back in the city of London for your umpteenth microchipping. And here is yet another Guardian columnist, Gary Young, to lecture us on our democracy in crisis, claiming Americans are blaming the refugees solely for the soft invasion of Europe and the United States, an invasion engineered by the very globalists signing Young's paychecks. His ascent is part of a rise in right-wing populism throughout the Western world. Most Western nations have their own Trump, a racist, xenophobic, Islamophobic demagogue appealing to a mix of nationalist nostalgia, patriotic myth, class grievance, and economic insecurity. Now, liberal commentators describe them as a threat to democracy, but it would be more accurate to understand them as the product of democracy already in crisis. The overall direction of The Guardian is going to be decided by the people who run the trust. And it will also include uh, many powerful people who are very plugged into the uh, international finance community. Finance community? Yes. Anytime Guardian columnists Stephen Thrasher, Jonathan Friedland, Gary Young, and Dame Forgan, for that matter, want to have a debate over their claims, myself and a few other info warriors would be happy to educate you on the glaring reality staring you squarely in the face. John Bound for Infowars.com. And don't tell me that I'm a weirdo because I'm upset about this. I'm just sick of dishonorable trash. Supreme Cobra Commander! Your failures! You think I'd sell my family out like you, dirtbag? Lead. It's a toxic element that can be found in pipes and water infrastructure. It also recently made national headlines in Flint, Michigan. But instead of implementing actual solutions, local and federal politicos pass the blame, and still, to this day, this neurotoxin is piped into Flint homes where it can cause profound and permanent adverse health effects to the brain and nervous system of children. This drinking water crisis is not just isolated to Flint, Michigan. Last week, KERANews.com posted the headline, Flint-like levels of lead detected in water at three Texas centers for the disabled. Officials at the Brenham, Texas facility are now distributing bottled water to residents and employees. But the Texas Department of State Health Services and DADS, the Texas Department of Aging and Disability Services, want people to be screened for negative long-term effects of exposure, reported the Texas Standard. The Dallas Morning News also reports that hundreds of disabled Texans living at three state-supported living centers have been drinking water that contains toxic amounts of lead, rivaling those found in the water system in Flint, Michigan. The article continues, the EPA requires water systems to take steps to reduce lead levels if 10% of the samples taken exceed 15 parts per billion of lead. Each of the three affected Texas facilities collected samples that contained over 104 parts per billion. The highest was 266. Dennis Borrell, head of the Coalition of Texans with Disabilities, told the Texas Standard last week that these facilities have a population of children as well. 15 times the maximum EPA level of lead was found in the drinking water at Brenham State Supported Living Center, where some people have lived for decades. And apparently there are still a population of children also living there too. As disturbing as these findings are, elevated lead levels have been found in the general population's drinking water systems as well. This means lead in the water is not only confined to disability services facilities. 
In January 2016, KXAN News reported a KXAN analysis of Texas Commission on Environmental Quality data found more than 15 local water suppliers with individual test results that show lead levels exceeding 15 parts per billion since 2005. Findings like these are not limited to Texas or Michigan. USA Today recently released an article entitled Beyond Flint, Excessive Lead Levels Found in Almost 2,000 Water Systems Across All 50 States. The article warns many of the highest reported lead levels were found at schools and daycares. A water sample at a main elementary school was 42 times higher than the EPA limit of 15 parts per billion, while a Pennsylvania preschool was 14 times higher, records show. At an elementary school in Ithaca, New York, one sample tested this year at a stunning 5,000 parts per million of lead, the EPA's threshold for hazardous waste. So while lead in the local Flint, Michigan water supply was a national story, lead in the national water supply is being reduced to nothing more than a few local stories around the country. According to Healthline.com, lead is a highly toxic metal and a very strong poison. Lead poisoning usually occurs over a period of months or years. The poisoning can cause severe mental and physical impairment. Young children are the most vulnerable to lead poisoning. Based on these results, it is safe to say that the best option for everybody is to filter all of the water you and your family will consume, whether that means drinking, cooking, or bathing. Don't depend on your local water utilities to provide you with clean and pure drinking water. Install a high-end water filtration system in your home. We have several options at InfoWarsStore.com, all of which reduce lead levels in the water you and your family consume. Lead is a serious health problem, and the public is not being warned about it. As more investigations are being conducted, the more it becomes clear that the entire nation, especially our children, are at serious risk of exposure. For InfoWars.com, I'm David Knight. You traitors claiming I'm a Ruski agent, say it to my face and I'll break your nose. I'm sick of it. I will stomp your head in the ground, you traitorous maggots. While we go under Obamacare, North American Union, conquered by European banks, announcing our kids don't belong to us, total bondage, total surveillance, and you want to shoot your mouth off about me being a Ruski agent, I will stomp your head in the ground. Never water yourself down just because someone can't handle you at 100 proof. It's the Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Oh, I, oh, I wish we go back to the days. I'm telling you, of just get my satisfaction out in the street. You pick a sword or something else. Get Brain Force at 25% off for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably notice I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of Brain Force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're going to crash afterwards. And the cool thing about this is it's not just a bunch of energy compounds that are going to fire your brain up to a higher RPM or whatever, which it does do. This is sustainable. This isn't going to spike and you're going to collapse and you're going to feel really bad afterwards. Words. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. We're looking at the television screen for research purposes or whatever we've been doing, trying to learn something or staring at the computer all day, working, doing good. You're still damaging your brain. You will find Brain Force and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Get Brain Force at 25% off for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com. And we thank you for your support. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139.
and welcome back here on InfoWars Nightly News and this Friday evening edition. Now, we've already seen civil unrest at record levels since the 60s here in the United States, mainly Bernie and Hillary supporters attacking our own Jakari Jackson, hitting him with a rock, uh, attacking police horses with barricades they're throwing at people. Uh, sh the New York Times calling, uh, you know, for somebody to kill Trump. Uh, Glenn Beck saying he wants to stab him. Uh, the establishment media the leftists are really trying to destabilize this country from my historical research. But Tim Kennedy, uh, Green Beret, uh, tours all over the world, famous UFC fighter, obviously, has also worked in some of the most elite units that deal with continuity of government and things like that. Now, he, he didn't tell me that. I know folks that are involved in that, and they say he's one of the top guys. But he says, yes, I'm an expert, and that he can speak to it. And so I want him to kind of repeat to us what he said behind the scenes about how concerned he is about what is coming, what is already here, and how bad it could get, and how we stop it and maintain our free, open republic. Because make no mistake, the Soros-backed globalists want civil disobedience, civil emergencies, riots, looting, race war, to bring in even greater control later. They're pushing this to take everybody's free speech in the end. So for the about eight minutes we have left here in this final segment of InfoWars Nightly News tonight, I'm going to give the floor to Tim Kennedy. It's a scary thing coming up. You know, what, what we know is coming is uh, the, per the perfect Petri dish for bad things to happen. You don't see riots in Chicago in the middle of winter. It's too cold. People don't want to go outside, right? Uh, so for, for really civil unrest to happen, you have, have, you have to have a bunch of little things that set up for the perfect situation. You have to have a reason, right? People are so emotionally involved in this presidential election right now. And finally, for the first time, realizing that there's something wrong with our country, that there's been like the existential perspective that the eyes are open, eyes wide open. We know that something's not right. The racial segregation that, you know, like, even though we have a president saying, I'm trying to break down borders, we've never had so much hate between different racial segments, which is, is disheartening and, and concerning. But what's even more scary is we know that all of these things individually are setting up for the perfect opportunity for serious civil unrest. And now that we're moving into summer, we're moving into the presidential election, we're moving into us sending troops back into Iraq. We're looking at groups and segments of people that are supporting specific presidential nominees that are losing their guy, that are furious over the fact that, you know, Ted Cruz, you know, the never Trump people or the never Hillary people or the never Sanders people, all those people are losing their guys and they're only gonna have two options. And now we have a perfect conducive environment for some serious problems. You think riots in, you know, Missouri was bad? Just wait until July. Just wait until August. So if the dominoes are set up and lined up and Soros and others want to kick them over, what do we do? Yeah, you say dominoes. I say the gasoline. You know, like it, the trench has been dug and it is just full of accelerants. You know, like you have every single thing for that fire to just explode. And now- So the climate's perfect. Yes, the climate is perfect. The temperature is perfect. The <laughs> everything is right for things to go really So if the planets are aligning, and most analysts are saying that, it's happening all over the world. We've seen some of the globalists fund the Arab Spring to put radical Muslims in and other things. H how do we counter this? I mean, educating the public? It, being prepared, first of all. You know, as an individual, you have to get ready. You have to do all the little things that, you know, don't think that people don't care if people think that you're crazy. Don't think that, they, that you're being a fanatic, that you're being a prepper. I'm only responsible for my family. My family's gonna have food. My family's gonna have water. We are gonna be safe. And that. And if you think I'm crazy because I wanna make sure my family's protected, fine, that's, that's the way it is. But as an individual, you need to look and research about ways that you need to prepare for what would happen in whatever city you, city you live in. If you're in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Trump comes to town, and the whole entire city loses its mind, they're breaking horses' legs, they're throwing Molotov co cocktails, that's in May before we even have him as a nominee. What do you think is gonna happen in August when we're just a couple of months away from the election when things are really ripe? It can get bad and it can get bad fast. You need to do the research and figure out what you have to do to really prepare to make sure that your family's safe. So August, September, key times. Yeah, July, August, September, all the way up into, you know, finally November. It's when it starts cooling off, people get a little bit, while their emotions get higher, because we're getting closer to an election, um, you know, like the temperature and the environment will maybe preclude people from getting out in the streets. 
Also, I see political solutions to this, letting Hillary Clinton, George Soros, Obama, and others who can't win political debates but, but want to try to throw the country into crisis. It's important to know that they've done this all over the world and to let them know and the public know that they're going to be held accountable. I mean, I think at a certain point when George Soros has spent, in, in just Ferguson alone, $35 million or $33 million trying to cause race war and attack on the police— I mean, it's, it's clear that's sedition. And, and how long is this guy allowed to do this? I mean, I defend the First Amendment. I'm a constitutionalist. So are you, Tim. But at a certain point, when you've got some outsider trying to destabilize the country, uh, that's, that's, that's criminal sabotage, in my view. There's got to be some limit to this. I mean, if I went to Europe... And if I had billions of dollars or some other country or region and tried to finance destabilization, people would come after me. Yeah, they'd hang you. If you walk into a movie theater and you scream fire, you go to jail. You know, you, you have committed a crime. Absolutely. And that is what they're doing on a, a micro scale into individual cities, into even states. And now nationally, they are inciting and encouraging racial wars and riots. It's It's... Uh, you know, it's, it's like our worst nightmare has come to fruition. We are actually realizing that you put these people in front of a camera and give them a microphone, and they're enabling other people to hurt police officers, to go and stab and riot and everything that we're against as a nation. These people are encouraging. And, and it's the very same Peter Sutherland, George Soros, and others that are in Europe that have let 5 million, quote, refugees in that you've talked about. Um, how, how big are these cells? How, how big is the danger of what's happened in Europe? Because, you know, here they use a bunch of leftist mobs and others brainwashed by the public school system. Over in Europe, they're bringing in 5 million jihadis, 80 percent are military aged men, I'm told. From, from, from your connections and research, is that accurate? Yeah. So if, if you bring in, let's say, 100 people, we know somewhere between 10 to 15 of them have been radicalized, that they're extremists. So when you're talking that you're bringing in a million people, how many of those now do we know are extremists? 150,000. 50,000. Now look at what one does in San Bernardino. One guy and his stupid wife go and start mowing down people. That's one dude. They're liberal coworkers. Think about what 100,000 of them could do in this country. What they're going to do in Europe in the next five years. It's coming. So why would Merkel and Hollande and others bring them in? Use the civil emergency to ban nationalist and patriot speech. That's what they've done. If you, if you want to be able to shut people up, you have to use fear. So the, the de definition of terrorism is to use fear or violence as a tool, as a weapon to achieve your objectives, right? Um, if you're a politician, you can use that same fear to, to take away freedoms, to pass acts that... Get, give you access to every single iPhone out there. Be like, no, 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 it's a terrorist. We need to be able to get inside of that guy's phone. He's really bad. Just, just give us access to all iPhones so that, um, so we can protect you. That's terrorism in my definition. You're using fear and as a, as a weapon to gain more Absolutely. freedom. Wow, Tim Kennedy, that was powerful info. The whole country, the whole world's in danger of escalated civil unrest, like Google financing the Arab Spring to just bring in that tyranny, and these vultures sit on top of it. You're getting folks ready uh, with sheepdogresponse.com uh, and more. We're trying to get people ready by informing them. Thanks for coming in with your uh, geopolitical and uh, military and just common sense analysis. Uh, it's great to have you here with InfoWars visiting. All right, folks, that's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Lord willing, I'll be back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. with a Sunday transmission, and back Monday with the four-hour radio slash TV show. You can find all the listings and more at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Have a great weekend, and please reach out to your friends, your family, and others, and warn about what's happening. God bless you all. Did you know that only six corporations control 90% of what millions of Americans see, hear, and read every single day? It's the illusion of choice. Think about it. The mainstream media is owned by only a handful of mega corporations with vested interests. But on the other hand, the internet is an interconnected network of billions of sources. So you can research information for yourself from multiple sources, or you can blindly accept what you hear or read in the mainstream media, never questioning what you are being told. This gives you a false sense of reality. I mean, do you actually know what you think you know? Or have you been programmed to accept someone else's version of events? Think about it.
Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, Knockout's it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult, and it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.